Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're going to put together a Pen Clash 5000. We took it apart to do some problem diagnosis on it. There was a vibration in this reel or a, a, a harsher noise, and uh, on the first part of the video, what we showed you was that there was an accumulation of grease in here, but also we have aftermarket um, gearing, and I truly believe that it's caused by the two stainless steel gears now. The, the pinion gear has been replaced with stainless, and I think because that's a harder metal it's going to have a harsher uh, tone to it uh, when you uh, when you crank so uh, nothing wrong with this reel other than um, the upgrade there and I think the upgrade is what's caused the issue so we're gonna put it back together now so of course we cleaned that all out you may remember the case on the other one it had a lot of old grease underneath the cross wind gear so we took that apart uh, we're, let's go reinstall then so we're gonna grab a uh, a little bit of blue grease to make sure that we have enough grease on the, the pinion gears. I'm going to take a shot at the, uh, the ball bearing under here with a little bit of oil. I'm going to make sure we have some oil on the back bearing as well. And then we're going to go grab the, uh, the smaller of the two uh, cross wind gears. And this is for stability. Most of the time you'll open up a reel and you'll only see the, the main gear driving into the cross wind gear. In this case, we have two of them. It's just a smoother transition point uh, to the design here. Um, we're going to take that cross wind gear. I'm going to clean that up a little bit as well. Some older grease on the back of that. Now, this has got a Teflon washer on it. Typically, you don't need to, to put any kind of grease onto Teflon, but I, it rides on a metal track here. I'll just put a little bit on there. The slip uh, won't hurt it. And we're going to make sure that that cross wind gear meshes with the top one, which it does. Uh, we've tested this and made sure that the, um, the teeth were okay on both sides. We'll go ahead and put the, uh, the screw back in now for that. Just remember that cross wind gear is sitting on a bushing. It's held in by a screw. Sometimes on some of the lower end models you won't see a screw in here. Uh, you won't see a bushing. You'll just simply see a post like this up here that's been pressed into the case. And here you can see as I'm rotating the thing how the secondary one goes. An interesting note on this one, when you crank this reel, the teeth that are on the main gear behind it are going to drive both of these. So it's just another stability. It's giving you two pivot points as opposed to one on this. So uh, it, should, uh, it should result in smoother operation. Okay, we've cleaned up the back of the main gear. We're going to just put a little bit of blue grease on both, of, both sides of that. The grease that I use is a Pen Reels Precision Reel Grease. I call it blue grease, but it's uh, Pen Reels Precision Grease. And uh, you don't have to use Pen Reels Grease with Pen Reels. Uh, and, and, you know, anybody's manufacturing uh, will have these, and that's okay to use uh, other manufacturers' grease. But just make sure that the grease that you are using is for fishing reels. Uh, that becomes important because if you're using something, and I've seen everything over the years, things like Vaseline and the like, just know that uh, you know it may be too heavy, it may be too light, and uh, may not be water resistant. Uh, there's a host of properties that need to be considered in lubrications. Just make sure you have the right one. Okay, and then you might remember that the crosswind block runs on a post that's inset into the, uh, the reel case. And before I put this um, shaft in, I, I gotta remember that I have the lock nut assembly that goes on. And that's the value of a parts bucket. If you, uh, if you keep everything in the same tray, if you look in there and you say, gee, what's that piece doing in here? You probably realize that you didn't reinstall it. Uh, and uh, it's a good time to remember to go do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the set screw for that now. I'm gonna put that in the the lock nut assembly and that's to keep that lock nut from uh, slipping backwards if a lot of times you'll get a reel in or I'll get a reel in and it's got slop in the main gear or slop in the assembly the assembly ro rocks back and forth and that's because this nut has become loose uh, some manufacturers counter that by reversing the threading on this nut so that it uh, it spins with the reel so it doesn't spin against it. In this case, this does come counterclockwise so it could work itself free if you didn't have a lock 
locking mechanism there. Okay, we're going to give it a quick drive. I'm not hearing any grinding there, so that tells me that the issue that we've had uh, is in the intersection of the main gear and the pinion gear. Uh, let's go ahead and put the shaft back in then. When we do that shaft, we're going to put a little bit of blue grease on that as well. Not much, because it will accumulate here uh, if you just uh, put too much in there. We'll go ahead and load that in. Grab the, uh, the little screw that holds the shaft to the cross wind block. And those of you that watch me know that I have some issues with these small screws, so it's that time of the video, I guess. There we go. Should be alright with that. And then we can reinstall the main gear. So from a design standpoint, you know, a little bit different thing. You got the two two gears for the cross wind as opposed to the one. You got a little shaft that it rides up and down on. Those of you that work on Shimano reels know that uh, Shimano's got a um, a level wind assembly, a little bit different, but it rides cross post wise up and down on reels like the Stratic and that. Uh, you know, there's some various designs to try and keep the tension off of that uh, block. Got a little shim on here, side case bearing, side plate. Make sure that locks in. I'm just checking right now. Hearing a little bit of noise, but not as much as I did before. Maybe that was an accumulation of grease and some things in there. Let's tighten this down and see how it uh, how it performs once we tighten it down. Sometimes when you put the case on and you put a little bit more pressure on it, the uh, when the gears intersect, uh, that's where you get the uh, the noise coming in. So uh, we'll see. But back to this uh, rotor here. If you notice a side to side wobble on that, you. The first indication should be that your line is not spooling properly, that you're either top heavy on the line or you're getting a lot of cross spooling going on in an X pattern or you're getting a bottom bottom spooling and that's usually because that uh, that rotor is too uh, too tight uh, or not tight enough I'm sorry. Now what's happening here is I think there's an extra shim in this reel that came along with that um, uh, aftermarket set of gears. We're going to see if it, if it gets too tight, we're going to go take that shim out. Yeah, so we're going to go pull that shim back out and see if it makes a difference. I think it might. Just an indication of, uh, you know, sometimes it's not needed, right? Sometimes that shim is there because there's some extra play in the teeth. Sometimes it's not needed. In this case, I don't believe it's needed. So we'll go take that out and see if it makes a difference. And this is a lot of times it's trial and error when you're trying to deal with something like that. It's sort of like the guy who brings the, the car into a mechanic and says, you know, I got a car and then makes a silly noise and tries to replicate the noise, which of course is never what the thing actually sounds like. At least when I do it, it never sounds like it. But uh, in the end of time, uh, you know, the mechanic's got to go with his best guess and let's see where it takes them from there, right? So, in this case, I think that shim might be having an effect, so we'll see. But again, stainless steel gears, and they, they do the upgrades on the, the Jigmaster 500, and they do them some others with the stainless. Uh, yeah, they're more durable, but at the end of the day, the, uh, the issue becomes, in many cases, the, uh, the trade-off is that, yeah, they'll last longer, but they're they're not soft. Okay, we're gonna just put that back in there with just a single shim. We'll go see if that makes a difference now. Not sure it does. Yeah. The case locks easier, that's for sure. Let's see if we have play as we go about doing that then. We'll go put that down. Now with these, I don't tighten them all the way down until I get all of them seated well. If you tighten one side down, you might put pressure on the other side of the case. And if you do that, the, uh, the case sometimes binds and that causes uh, real problem issues with uh, operation. So just get them snug before you go back and tighten them all down, at the, you know, torquing them. It's important to uh, stay within the way that the manufacturer does them. 
right now that I got them all snug I can go back and, uh, and tighten those three down then we got the bump guard we got to put on we, we got to put this one on because you've got that little peg that the uh, reel rides with okay there's just one way this goes and that's the way it goes it's not a symmetrical bump guard so you'll figure it out if you're putting it back and me and my small pieces and parts again okay so let's take this for a drive and uh, put the spool on put the handle on crank it actually we can put the handle on by itself and uh, that'll tell us if it's remedied it at all well it's a little smoother I, I have to admit that we'll go put some let's get that cleaned up there So taking that one shim out seems to have taken some of the pressure off that main gear. We'll see how it, how it operates here. Now definitely smoother. I'm not noticing the, the, the play that was a concern. So uh, there you go. So that's how to put a pen clash back together. <laughs> and uh, we're going to return this one for... Uh, for use let them go out there and catch some more fish so with that i uh, hope you've enjoyed the video uh, if you did please like it if you want to see more uh, please subscribe thank you